Hello and welcome back. If you watched my most recent video, then I've given you at least a brief introduction to the idea of an acrylic blade. Uh, today I wanted to do a review on a couple different acrylic blades from Ripper Blades. Uh, these are a couple of their stock models. This is the Ninja Blade and this is the Spartan Blade. Uh, this is in a two-tier and three-tier version. I'll talk about what that means in just a moment. Before I pick those things back up again and go into that though, let me talk about Ripper Blades in general. All right, so Ripper Blades is a company that has pretty much specialized just in blades. They don't make sabers. Uh, back a long time ago, as I mentioned in my last video, there was a lot of craze about the dark saber, and Gary Ripper, to my knowledge, was the first one to sort of figure out this design. If he wasn't the first, I'm sure you guys will let me know about that in the comments section. You're pretty good at keeping me honest. But as far as I know, he was the first one to come up with this. He is most certainly the most prolific in it right now. Uh, he's got a website, whereas a lot of other people are doing these things sort of on the side. He's specialized in them. Uh, this acrylic was his sort of flagship model. He's got a few more things going on now, and we'll be taking a little bit closer look at some of those in other videos. But for right now, uh, the acrylic blades. Now, blades that you get from Ripper Blades have a tier system, as I mentioned. This right here is a two-tier blade, which means that you see the lightning detail in the middle? A one tier would just have that, uh, would have a little bit more of a simplistic lightning, a little bit less embellishing. It would have less polish up here on top uh, and a little bit less of an edge. So this is a two tier. This right here is a three tier. You can see the difference is that instead of just having lightning from the middle, it has lightning coming in from the edges as well. It has a wider edge. And if you can see the bevel on this, it's actually rounded and clear. Uh, highly polished as opposed to the sort of flat on the other. A little bit about these blades in general, the stock models. Uh, this is a Spartan V2. The difference between the Spartan V1 and the Spartan V2 is these little points right here. The V1 has more of a tapered look. It comes up and goes out. The V2 comes out to a larger point. At least that's what I've been able to identify as the primary difference. Um, this is the Ninja Blade. He has a Katana Blade as well that has a curve, but the Ninja Blade is straight. Uh, like a ninja toe. All right. Ripper blades uh, are all hand done, so he's not laser printing these like other people that I've seen. Uh, they actually have a little maker's mark on them right there. That's a little R for Gary Ripper. Um, so that's a little bit about what these things are. Let me, uh, let me go ahead and review these two models that I've got here. All right. So the ninja blade that we see right here you notice that we do get some light loss down at the base here. A lot of that's coming out through the vents of my saber. But you get sort of a flare here, which is actually not a bad effect. It tapers to the end, but the illumination is still pretty good all the way out to the tip here. Uh, it's pretty evenly lit. All right, let me show you how this looks with different colors. I find that I like them best with, uh, with white or yellow, uh, just because it sort of completes that energy saber effect. All right, go ahead and shut that down. So that was a look at the Ninja Blade. Now this one is pretty durable, actually. Uh, because it's so low profile, it cuts through the air. You don't have to worry about swinging with the flat quite as much. Uh, the weak point on all of these Ripper Blades is right here in the plug. Because what you have is sort of the tang of the acrylic blade that comes down into this circular plug. It's attached with acrylic weld and it's sort of curved right here to pick up the light and focus it down the blade. If it gets hit or dropped, this is where it's most likely going to break. You could break the blade, but it's going to take more pressure. Mostly it's going to break here. I actually had a side blade where this happened. I reattached it inside with some epoxy and it seems to work out just fine. So they're more durable than people give them credit for, but yes, they are fragile and they are certainly not for dueling. All right, now let's take a look at the Spartan blade. Okay, I'm not gonna attach this one in here, but there we go. So we still have that flare at the base here. It doesn't come all the way to the points. Uh, still pretty good illumination. Now there's one thing that you can't see in this video uh, that you can see in the image that I used at the front of this video, and that's the Spartan blade is a pretty wide one. So right here at its widest point, 
we're actually getting a little bit of light loss from here to here. It gets a little bit dim through this area. It's less visible in the white than it is in something like a red, like in the uh, original image, but you do get a little bit of it. The Spartan blade is also a little bit more unwieldy. Because it's heavier and thicker, if I were swinging it around and I happened to swing it by the flat, there would be more wind resistance, more stress on this plug, um, and just more weight in general. So a little bit less versatile, but still, if this is the look that you're going for, it is definitely pretty as a display piece. All right, so that's a little bit of a close-up on a couple of these and I, the idea of their tier system. So let's, let's field the million-dollar question about Ripper Blades, which is, are they worth the million dollars? Now, they're not, they don't cost a million dollars, but price is a big issue on these. I know that it's what kept me away from them for a very long time. Now, um, this, a blade like this one right here in the T th or a Tier 3, this would be about $140. This Ninja Blade in a Tier 2 would be uh, $100 on their website. Uh, by the way, I've included a link in the description for this video, so if you're interested in going on and looking around, that's, uh, it's right down there for you. Now, um, you can get them, I think a Tier 1 of this costs 80 which isn't too bad, and you can get the Tier 1, or the, uh, tier one Version 1 Spartan for around the same. But $80 as a beginning price point does still put it much higher than your standard lightsaber blade. For me especially, I end up getting most of mine as grab bags from Alter Sabers, so I spend about $10, $15 on a blade. If you're buying them for the TCA, or, uh, TCSS uh, and you're making your own, you're spending about $15 a blade. Um, those are the budget blades. Now those of you in the market who are getting the completed blades for you with some of the bells and whistles pre-done, like a Vader's Vault blade or a Sabers blade or one of the ones that comes with the, uh, the Electrum Sabercraft stuff, you are probably paying between forty and sixty dollars for a blade. Uh, Saber Forge blades are somewhere in the middle, close to that thirty forty dollar mark. Um, but a lot of lightsaber blades are between forty and sixty bucks. If you're in the budget blade market, you tend to forget that. So, are these more expensive? Yes, but not by as much as you might think. Um, so, let's look at what you get for that. <clears throat> I showed you the little maker's mark on these. Uh, and tells you a little bit about how these are done by hand. So the Ripper Blades, the way to think about them is not thinking about them as a consumable or a, uh, or a supply for your lightsaber as you would for a standard blade. You get a bunch of blades, you beat them up, you pop a new blade in, it's the part that wears out first. That's not the way to look at these. Okay, you look at these as a display piece, as an art piece, because okay? each one is individual, especially if you go the route where you have uh, Gary Ripper do a custom blade for you, then it's definitely a one-of-a-kind. But uh, these things as an art or display piece, that's what you're paying the extra 20, 40, 60, 100 dollars for. So you're paying for the for the know-how, for the art or for the artistry. Right. Um, another thing to keep in mind with these is the way that I would justify the cost, and these days I've come I've rationalized the cost, uh, is that you're not buying a consumable or a product for your blade. What you're buying is a sort of a upgrade to your favorite saber. That favorite saber that you've got in your collection uh, that, you, that you fell in love with way back when, this is a way to make you fall in love with it again. Uh, getting something like this sort of takes that saber, pushes it up to the next level. So think about it in terms of, I could buy another saber that I'm not going to love as much as the one that I love the most, or I can buy something that's gonna upgrade the sabers that I already have. And looking at it that way, it's, uh, it's a much more justifiable cost. All right, so um, the Ripper Blades, one other thing about them, yeah, you probably could do something like this on your own. You're paying for Gary Ripper's know-how on this. Um, I could probably do it, but it would cost me like 40 bucks in materials to do it and a whole lot of time. Okay, for that extra 60 bucks, you're getting somebody who does this well, does this often, knows what they're doing, so it saves you the trouble of messing up $40 in materials three or four times while you figure it out and wasting a whole lot of time. You end up with something from somebody who knows what they're doing, that's going to work, that's more durable than people often give them credit for, and that certainly bumps your saber that you currently own up to the next level. So, for my, or in my opinion, the Ripper Blade as a display, as a costume piece, it is definitely something to look into, simply because there's a lot of them in the, or there's several of them in the market, and you've seen them around, and you know that you're curious about them. So uh, 
it's not going to put that to rest until you go out and get one, and it's definitely a worthwhile purchase. You, it, uh, it really helps push that saber over the top. So hopefully this has been of help. Um, I said that, that Ripper Blades does a few more things other than just the solid acrylics, so join me back here for some other reviews and we'll take a look at some things that they do that are dual worthy. Um, see whether or not those are worth the expense that they call, or that they uh, they charge for them. Uh, we'll have tutorials and performances. So if you liked this, please subscribe. Join me back for more.